In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Herald build, which is a level 100 version of the Champion build. So if you've been wondering how to dual wield great swords out around the 100 level, watch on to find out. So first up, of course, is the weapons that we're using here. We've actually switched out our Claymore and our Lord Sworn Great Sword for two Iron Great Swords. And the reason for this is that they're pretty much pound for pound king of great swords in the game. They deal pretty much the most damage in almost every scenario if you're using a great sword. And they uh, can have the Ashtavor replaced, and we're replacing those with this build. So those are the two reasons that we use these. The easiest way to get these, or really the only way, I should say, is to farm the Leonin Misbegotten's in the Royal Capital area. There's sort of a stretch where there's two of them. They're not very close together. It will take you a while to do this. It'll take you probably an hour or two. That's about how long it took me if you want to get a pair of them. The next thing you're going to need for this build is the Red Hot Wet Blade. This is a key item that lets you put Fire and Flame Affinity on your weapons. We're going to be using the Flame Affinity for this build. So you're going to have to track that down. That's located in Red Main Castle. It's not very hard to find at all. And the exact location of that is on the wiki. You will also need the Sanctified Wet Blade, which is located in the Royal Capital in the Fortified Manor there. It's right inside on the upper floor, so that's not very hard to find either. And you'll be needing both of these. This one lets you set the Lightning and Sacred Status affinities on your weapons. So you're going to be bouncing back and forth between Sacred or Flame, depending on what you're facing. The Ash of War we actually want for this is Royal Knight's Resolve. This is an upgraded version of Determination, which buffs your damage by 80% for 15 FP on your next swing. That's found in Volcano Manor, and you're going to need to duplicate that because you're going to want to put one on each of your great swords. You can do that by using a Lost Ash of War and going to the Blacksmith, and then he'll be able to duplicate this for you. Once you have all those things, you're going to slot the Royal Knight's Resolve Ashes on both of those great swords, and you're going to set either both Flame or both Sacred, depending on the scenario. For instance, if you're in the Volcano area, you'll notice that the enemies there are extremely fire-resistant, no surprise. So you can just go to the nearest uh, site of Sacred Grace and slot the Sacred version on there with Knight's, Royal Knight's Resolve, and then your damage will be a lot higher in that area, and then if you find it's weak in another area, you can just swap them to Fire or the Flame, rather. The reason that we use the Flame Art Affinity instead of the Fire Affinity is simply because the damage is better. You can put this on, you can test this with either Affinity in your build and see which does more damage and you'll realize pretty quickly that it's Flame Art. Um, so you'll actually get more damage out of the Flame than you will out of Fire. So you can use Fire if you want, but I don't recommend it. Flame outperforms it in my testing. I also did testing with the heavy versions of these weapons and pumping my strength to the same amount that I had Faith, even more so, like about 40 strength or so. And the damage wasn't anywhere near what I was getting with Flame or Sacred uh, with that amount of Faith. So I think it's definitely better to do the Faith route. And on top of that, not only are you going to get more natural damage that way, you're going to gain access to some spells that buff your damage on top of that because you have the Faith to use them. So it's kind of double win here. When it comes to Sacred Seals, which one you use isn't super important. You don't even really need to upgrade it with this build if you don't want. Really, the reason for that is because Blessing's Boon... Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow don't increase in potency based on the incantation scaling or upgrades or faith. So they're not going to get any stronger no matter what you do. It really comes down to what other incantations you want to use with this build. For instance, Lightning Spear seems to work extremely well. So using the Gravelstone Seal will buff the damage of that so it's not a bad choice. It also has S scaling. But if you find yourself using other incantations like Fire Ones or something like that, you may want to use a different seal that's better for those. When it comes to armor, you really want to use the heaviest you got. The one exception is the Raptor's Black Feathers. We're going to wear that on our chest because that increases your jump attack damage by 10%. We do a lot of jump attacks with this build, so that's great. And the other three pieces can be the absolute heaviest that you can get away with and still medium roll. You really want as much protection with this build because part of playing this build is super aggressive. You want to shrug off attacks and keep on swinging through them. And you're going to have a huge health pool, so... You should be able to do this. You just need to make sure you get as much protection as you possibly can. The four talismans I use for this build are the Great Jar's Arsenal, Green Turtle Talisman, Dragon Crest Shield Talisman plus one, and the Claw Talisman. Great Jar's Arsenal is there to increase our equip load. As I mentioned, you want to get as much protection as possible, and this gives you plus 20% to your equip load, whatever your equip load value is, which is going to be substantial because you're going to have a lot of points in endurance. So you're going to get like 17 or 18 equip load out of this probably, which is a lot. Green Turtle Talisman is a staple of just about every one of my builds. Regenerating stamina quickly benefits almost every playstyle in the game, and that's no exception here, which is why we have it. The Dragon Crest Shield Talisman plus one increases your physical protection by a substantial amount. It's like a little over 10%, and that's going to get you to like 40-45% physical protection when you're buffed with Golden Vowel. 
which means you're going to be taking about half the damage from every physical attack that hits you, which is very, like a huge reduction in damage. And that's going to allow you to jump attack through a lot of attacks and take damage and trade blows and just finish enemies off quickly. You'll obviously want to swap out the Dragon Crest Shield plus two when you get it, but at this point of the game, I think you'll probably only have plus one. The Claw Talisman boosts your jump attack damage by 15%. This does stack with the ar chest armor, the Raptor chest armor. So you're going to get even more damage out of jump attacks, and you want to be trying to do jump attacks just about every opportunity you can. The spells I use for this build are Flame Grant Me Strength, Golden Vow, Blessings Boon, and Lightning Spear. You can, of course, use any other spells you want for this build, but the magic is not the focal point of this build. They're really there to buff your melee combat style, except Lightning Spear, which is just there for, you know, situations where, you know, picking off an enemy from afar is just far easier than what's going to happen if you don't. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility. But what's really great about Flame Grant Me Strength is that it boosts your physical and your fire damage both by about 20%. So when you're using the flame versions of your Iron Greatswords, you're not only boosting the physical aspect by 20%, you're boosting the flame, so you're going to get even more damage out of them when you're using that one. Golden Vow is going to give you plus 15% total damage, and it's going to give you 5% damage mitigations. That's going to add to your already high mitigations. That's going to put you in that 45% or so range. And what's really great about this version compared to the version we were using in the champion build is that this one lasts 90 seconds because it's not the Ash of War, so you don't need to use it nearly as often. And lastly, Blessing's Boon just heals you over time. It's good to put in before you're going to like run into a group of enemies or a boss fight or something like that, just to give you a little bit of health regen over the course of a fight. Because as I mentioned, your, you know, your protection is rather high, so the damage you take is going to be drastically reduced. So that healing over time can actually replenish a lot of the hits you're going to take. So generally the way you play this build is that as you're exploring on the landscape or in a legacy dungeon or a dungeon area, you're going to buff with Golden Vow while you're running around in order to keep your damage up and your mitigation up. And you're going to just jump attack into stuff and mow it down as quick as you can. You're probably going to take some hits here and there and you're just going to live. And if your health gets down to, I don't know, about two thirds of the health, you're going to pop Blessings Boon to heal yourself back up if you're not in any immediate danger. That way you can save your healing class for when you really need them. And you're just going to wade through the areas like that pretty much the whole time using Lightning Spear as necessary. And then when you get to like difficult enemies that are up ahead that you can see there's going to be a difficult fight or there's a boss fight, you're going to buff the Flame Grant Me Strength as well on top of those in order to give yourself a little bit extra edge. And as I mentioned, you're going to be able to swap back and forth between Sacred and Flame Affinities at Sites of Grace depending on what you're facing. So if something's strong to Holy, you can swap to Fire. Or if it's strong to Fire, you can swap to Holy, etc. Whatever you do, though, you want to make sure that you keep the same damage type. You don't want to go, like, one holy and one fire. And the reason for that is if you're using, like, uh, Flame Grant Me Strength, it's going to work better if you have two fire weapons equipped than one equipped. Also, if you're using something like the Fire Scorpion Talisman, or if you're using the Holy Scorpion Talisman to boost your holy damage or your fire damage, which you can do with this build, you want to be able to both boost both weapons instead of, like, reducing your mitigation to only boost one weapon. So that's an option as well. And this probably goes without saying that you probably want to prioritize Flame over Holy uh, Infusion if you can, because Flame Grant Me Strength is going to benefit you more than the Holy One will most of the time. So you want to default the Flame when you can, and only swap out Flame for Holy when and something is really resistant to fire. My stats for this build look like 40 Vigor, 22 Mind, 34 Endurance, 18 Strength, 12 Dexterity, 9 Intelligence, 35 Faith, and 9 Arcane. We have Vigor at 40 here because, as I mentioned, you're going to be taking hits. It's going to be reduced in damage, um, but it's going to allow you to take those hits and live. So you really want high Vigor here because you're kind of going in just YOLO a lot of the time, which is a lot of fun, by the way. And you're going to take hits, and you're going to trade blows, and that's totally fine with this playstyle. You're not necessarily always trying to avoid damage, and you are going to be the one to initiate combat a lot. I've got 22 Mind here, but you probably want something more of like 25 or 30 Mind when you can get it. So moving forward with this build, you're going to want to put some more points into Mind. And that's because the buffs cost a substantial amount of FP, and you want to be able to use them every time you can. And also, your Royal Knight's Resolve is 15 FP per pop, which isn't cheap. If you have 100 FP, that's like 6 uses before you run out. Uh, and if you only have like 3 blue flasks, that's like not very long. So increasing your FP is going to be very, very good for this build over the you know, long period of this game. We've got 34 Endurance here for the Equip Load. That should be no secret at this point. You want to wear really, really heavy armor to get that uh, protection up. And allowing, you know, getting 34 Endurance is going to allow you to do that when you combine it with the uh, Talisman that increases your Equip Weight. So these in tandem work really well together. You can obviously 
this is a little bit flexible depending on exactly what armor you want to wear. But you want to try and make sure you don't need have any more endurance than you need, just enough equip load for your build. 18 strength is here to meet the requirements of one-handing the great swords. As I mentioned before, pumping strength doesn't actually outperform pumping faith with flame or sacred infusions for this build. So you really only want the minimum here in order to be able to use them. And you really don't need more than 10 dexterity. 10 dexterity is the minimum for these weapons. I just happen to have 12 with the class I am. So if you're a class with lower dexterity, this is probably going to give you a better stat spread. When it comes to faith, it's really there for two reasons. One, to increase the damage of your weapons. And two, to meet the requirements of Golden Vow and Blessings Boon. You don't need as much as we have to meet those requirements. But you do need about 24, 25-ish to meet them. And that extra faith just goes towards the damage of your weapons. And if you happen to want to use any offensive incantations like Lightning Spear or something else, it's going to boost the damage of those as well. And you really don't need any arcane for this build at all. That wraps up our Herald build. And honestly, out of all the builds I've played recently, this is probably my favorite. I get asked this a lot. This build slaps so hard. If you like being a honey badger in this game and you just don't give a fuck, this is the build to play. You can just slap things around, shrug off damage, and just play really fast and loose, which is extremely fun and not how you usually play from software games. Stay tuned for more builds. I don't know exactly which one I'm going to do next. I do know that I have an Archer build coming up, and I'm probably going to do a Pure Faith caster, or I'm probably going to update the Black Flame Blade build. So it's probably going to be one of those three next.